This is Dr. Jivya Sashiro, Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Dundigal, Hyderabad. So today, I will discuss about Engineering Tribology subject. The subject code is AMEC24. So already previous uh, class, we have discussed about uh, the Engineering Tribology introduction. And what is the importance of uh, engineering tribology for uh, various uh, you know, branches? And then, uh, so what is the uh, main terminology related to this tribology also we have studied. So today in this uh, session, the most important uh, uh, thing in the engineering tribology, the topic uh, we will discuss now. So that is, uh, Topography of surfaces. So, what do you mean this uh, topography of surface and uh, what is the, the importance of this uh, topography we will uh, see. So, already uh, you know the tribology is a subject science and technology and it covers the topics, the friction, the wear and the lubrication. But, so whenever two surfaces are in a contact, there the friction will be generated. So due to the friction, the wear will be occur. So some loss of material is possible. So to control, to control the friction, to minimize the wear, you have to use lubricants. So that is the, uh, the uh, importance of uh, tribology. Uh, for mechanical components and other engineering branches uh, like material science and then uh, chemistry lubricants. So that uh, that friction or wear depends upon the the surface quality of the two meeting surfaces, two meeting parts. So whenever two components are in relative motion, there will be chances of friction there will be some somewhere. So now, see in this uh, session, in this presentation, we will see the types of surfaces and uh, so what is the role of topography in this uh, tribology, we will see. So actually, it plays, that uh, surface topography plays a very important role in determining the performance of various uh, tribological mission components. So various uh, tribological mission components means whenever the, the co two components are in contact, like uh, the bearings, the mechanical bearings, the sliding contact bearings and rolling contact bearings, like a gear transmission and uh, piston, the piston moves inside a cylinder. So these all are the, the mission component, tribological mission components. So it, the, the performance of this uh, uh, mission depends upon this uh, surface topography. So example lathe uh, on the spindle, whenever you are machining in a lathe, you are doing the, some uh, step of turning. So that is the performance, the quality, the final output depends upon this uh, surface topography. If surface finish is very poor, then automatically the performance of the, uh, the component and also will be reduced. So that's why before, before going to perform any operation, before going to design a mechanical component, first you have to concentrate on this uh, surface topography. So that's why you can say it plays an important role when when the uh, you are calculating efficiency or when calculating performance of various uh, machine components, the rubbing uh, elements, so that there is a need to establish a correlation between surface topography and tribological performance. So the correlation, so to establish the validation between these two, the surface topography and uh, the performance uh, uh, parameters to establish. Establish a relations to uh, conduct experiments and then finally, e, finally select a optimal surface topography. 
So that so the based on your optimal surface photography, the mission will perform very well. So the so that the you have to calculate, you have to validate uh, between these two surface topography and topological performance, uh, and then uh, list out the specifications for different uh, moving components. So whatever uh, using in your um, uh, area, so the those for those components, uh, list out the specifications. So based on this, uh, uh, the correlation between the surface topography and the tribological performance parameters. See that the topography refers to the detailed description or representation of the physical features, the physical features of a surface. So wh what are the physical features of a surface? It means including its elevation. So how, how much the surface elevated from its ground level, the yeah, terrain and then other characteristics. So we will see uh, in coming up slides. So in various fields such as geology, geography and engineering and earth sciences, the topography of the surfaces plays a crucial role. So already I told you this uh, topography of surface not only in a mechanical and the components or not only in a moving uh, elements. In, it plays the important role in, in the case of geology field and geography and field and engineering field. Engineering field already you know. So whenever two components are in relative motion, they are compulsory. The surface topography plays an important role. So similarly in earth sciences also. So what is the, uh, the surface condition? What is the, the shape of the surface? And what is the elevation of the surface from its ground level? You have to calculate. So based on this uh, um, uh, surface, you can calculate uh, various parameters that is related to uh, various fields. So here some uh, key aspects uh, related to the uh, topography of surface uh, given that is elevation. So the first one is elevation. So elevation means this is the height above the reference point. So mark a one point and then uh, uh, from the reference point, uh, what is the height? Uh, so suppose uh, the ground surface is here, like this. So your surface is here. So what is the, the height of the elevation of the uh, surface from its reference point? So reference point is uh, this one. Take the reference point here, x, x. So here, this is a reference point. From its reference point, what is the height? So the elevation data uh, is crucial for understanding the relief and shape of the land. So the, based on this data, uh, is, uh, you can't calculate uh, the shape of the land and uh, nature of the land. So this is uh, one key aspect only so related to the topography of the surface. Clear? So always this uh, height uh, calculated uh, from the reference point above, above the reference point uh, usually sea level. So always take uh, take the point the sea level is the reference point. Next one is terrain. So here it refers to the physical characteristics of the land surface. Now in this you can uh, calculate the physical characteristics of the land surface. So that including features like mountains, valleys, hills and plains and other natural formations. So other natural formations if any is there, so you, you can uh, refer by using this uh, uh, terrain key aspect. So the characteristics of the land surface. So what is the characteristics of the mountain land? What is the characteristics of the plain, uh, plain ground? What is the characteristics of the valleys? And hill in hill areas, the land surface is very rough. So, what is the characteristic, physical characteristics of the land? So, based on this land, uh, the topography of the surface depends. So, land forms. So, here the land forms it uh, describes the various natural features of the earth surface. So, the earth surface uh, such as mountains valleys, flatters and plains. 
So these are the actually result of a geological process uh, shaping the landscape of our time. So whereas in a ge geological field, these land forms are very important. They describe the nature of the uh, earth surface. So uh, now uh, that uh, characteristics uh, you can uh, calculate. So next contours. So uh, the lines connecting points of equal elevation on a surface are known as contours. So like this contours. So the surface contours. So what is uh, the line connecting points equal elevation of the from the surface? So contour maps. These uh, the contours are used to draw the maps. So provide a visible representation of the topography. So you can uh, visualize the uh, based on these uh, the contours. So the topography. So helping to understand the shape of the land. So what is the the shape of the land? So suppose suppose example this is a land. So you can uh, calculate uh, uh, by using these contours, the connecting points the, uh, from its uh, elevation. So it uh, helps to understand the the shape of the land. So okay, like uh, this land is this uh, based on, uh, from the contours. You can say this land is. Uh, this mountain land, this land is a hill area land. Uh, okay, this is a uh, valley land. So, like that, the nature of the land you can calculate. So, it means it is the one type of surface. Clear? So, the based on this, uh, the major key aspects you can calculate, you can uh, determine the topography of the, the surface. Next, now coming to the engineering surfaces. So that is uh, the previous uh, already we have discussed about uh, other field, geological uh, field at the surface we have discussed. Now coming to the engineering surfaces are very important here uh, related to uh, um, uh, this engineering tribology subject of uh, subject point of view. So what do you mean by the engineering surfaces? Here see, so no matter how smooth you think a surface is there are always imperfections. Clear? So any surface you take always the present the imperfections. So imperfections like peaks and uh, valleys etc. Clear? That must eventually be accounted for. So accounted for the surface for um, topography. So that is uh, affect the surface and that is affect the performance of the uh, mission components. Whenever two components are related to motion, so compulsory. So suppose the surface is not not a smooth surface. The surface is a rough rough surface. There there compulsory there is a um, matter of uh, craters and uh, other um, defects. So so this these all defects leads to the poor surface finish. So finally, what will happen? The performance will be. Reduce the component performance will be reduced and sometimes uh, maybe fail. So due to the uh, different uh, the properties. So when two mating surfaces are placed in contact with each other, these fixes make contact and the wear begins. Already I told you. So wherever the two mating surfaces are placed in contact, then what will happen? The wear slowly begins. So. The continuously operate, you know, we are operating that the component uh, in relative motion, then what will happen? The wear will be major and then finally the component will fail. Clear. So, so how much wear uh, under one you can calculate by using different uh, methods and the surface, uh, the surface levels also you can calculate uh, using different uh, measurement measuring instruments. So that you can say no matter how smooth you think a surface, there are always some imperfections. Yeah. But you can minimize, you can reduce the wear, you can minimize the friction by using different uh, methods. So there is an associated roughness also with each surface as a result. So roughness also uh, causes uh, uh, to this uh, poor surface finish. Uh, Poor uh, uh, surface finish and poor quality, and then the wear, uh, the wear property depends upon this uh, uh, roughness. So high powered microscopes can show these peaks and valleys. So you can cannot see by using uh, uh, by by seeing the um, component. Uh, you can you can't carry you can't determine these peaks and valleys. 
by using this, uh, the high powered microscopes, you can say these component uh, ha uh, having some defects, having some fix and having some fee values. Clear? Yeah. So, based on the microscopic results, you can say this uh, the component having a full surface or a smooth surface or rough surface. Clear? Yeah. So, the large number of engineering components, so when you take any mechanical components, either deteriorate progressively or fail, catastrophically through a surface related phenomena. So, here the component fails, either deteriorate uh, progress initially, the small, the small crack uh, uh, will be initiated and then uh, slowly the crack is progressively developed and then uh, deteriorate the material. So, ultimately it, it uh, fails. So, that is uh, catas uh, catastrophically uh, property through the surface related phenomena. So, that is, you know, uh, the wear and fatigue and corrosion, etc. So, the deteriorate the material whenever the wear is begins, then the some material uh, will be lost and then uh, slowly uh, the component will fail. Similarly, the fatty property. So, whenever the component is subject to, to cyclic loads, mm -hmm. so the repeated loads, cyclic loads means repeated loads, one time tension and uh, other time compressor, tension to compressor, compressor tension like this, the load is applying. So, like this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the, 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 the after some time, not a number of cycles, a certain number of cycles, the component will fail due to the yield stress. So that, that that type of property is known as fatigue property. So here also the engineering components the, the progressively develop the fatigue uh, crack and then uh, the component will fail. The continuously all uh, the mechanical components are subjected to this uh, fatigue load. So the fatigue load is cyclic uh, load, repeated loads. Yeah, and then corrosion due to the uh, outside environmental conditions, the corrosion will be possible in the mission components. Yeah. So, the, due to the, all these uh, phenomena, so what will happen, the progressively the material loss will be occurred and then uh, your component will fail. So, this fact has uh, led to the establishment of the interdisciplinary subject. So, that is called as the surface engineering. So, that uh, they, they leads to establishment a, 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 a phenomena that is interdisciplinary subject. So, not only for mechanical this one, not only for electrical, not only for um, uh, computer science, this is all interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary uh, topic that is surface engineering. So, surface engineering is nothing but defined as the application of both the traditional innovative surface technologies. So, for what purpose to produce a composite material with properties unattainable in either the base or surface materials individually. So, whatever you develop a composite material, it can be, it can withstand the, the, the surface properties, it can withstand the fatigue, it can withstand the wear, it can withstand the temperature. So, it means so it can withstand the, the typological uh, the properties. So, then only uh, the component will give uh, good results. It will give good typological the properties. So, that is why a traditional and innovative surface technologies to produce a composite materials with uh, all these properties. Clear? Next one is a great uh, number of treatments also there to improve the, the surface, the surface topography of the material. So, the, the treatments and overlay coatings have important application related to the tribology. So, what are they? One is the surface treatments, another one is overlay coatings and then hardness of materials. Clear here surface treatments, different uh, surface treatments are there in mechanical uh, engineering gear treatment also there in the material set that is related to metallurgy, uh, metallurgical subject. So that is then surface treatment and is uh, nitrating is there, annealing is there, clear carburizing there, these all these are uh, uh, surface uh, treatments. So by using these uh, surface um, treatments, nothing but uh, the heat treatment process. 
you can improve the surface means you can improve the mechanical properties of the material you can uh, improve the heat resistance of properties of the material you can uh, improve the corrosion resistance of the material by using this uh, surface uh, treatments so similarly the overlay coatings different coatings are there so the, the, the silver coating aluminum coating so this this, this uh, leads to minimize the, uh, the corrosion to minimize the pain so so the, like, like this by using this uh, 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 these methods you can improve the the surface topography next hardness of material so the what is the hardness of material we can calculate by using brittle hardness number so brittle hardness testing uh, impact uh, testing clear so here uh, so all these methods to determine the hardness but how to improve the hardness of material so here also you, you can uh, use some different uh, the treatments so like uh, nitrating carburizing annealing clear so by using all these uh, methods you can improve the the mechanical properties chemical properties and the thermal properties of the material so then only you can uh, improve the uh, surface of the tribology surface topography so clear so the so whenever you are uh, uh, produced by using the, the project the component by using these methods the the component will never fail why because they are required the surface is possible and there is no wear there is no corrosion there is no fatigue property okay yeah. so if any any uh, damage is there that is after after certain number of cycles number of uh, turns uh, it will be happened okay yeah. so that's why you, you should concentrate uh, this uh, this type of uh, treatments to improve the uh, surface topography so next one is uh, roughness two things are important in uh, topography surfaces one is roughness and then is smoothness so pure smoothness is not possible so always the surface finish uh, finish in the surface uh, on the surface of the component having some imperfections like uh, uh, craters fakes clear like uh, the small uh, headers of material materials or small walls so it leads to wear and uh, corrosion so already we have discussed in uh, earlier uh, slides so roughness is one element of topography so it is uh, topography how influence on performance this roughness also influence on the performance if uh, having uh, the not and the surface uh, of the component not having good surface the surface uh, finish so what will happen the auto automatically uh, the, the stress concentration will be more and then due to the stress concentration what will happen fatigue uh, uh, fatigue uh, failure will be occurred so that is failures uh, chances are very high due to this um, uh, roughness while it in um, uh, when the manufacturing the product the roughness of the surface you can uh, uh, calculate so after during the manufacturing some roughness the surface finish uh, also not good due to the various uh, things various uh, conditions of the operation uh, operating procedures so here the, the some uh, uh, topography uh, have influences the performance like uh, light uh, scattering versus reflection the scattering effect and uh, then uh, resistance to fluid flow and then uh, nucleation for boiling and then friction and wear retention of lubricant these all these properties all these uh, factors influence the performance of the component mission component when it is in a ready to motion so that's why the roughness is uh, a very important uh, or important element in uh, element of topography so next one is stress con uh, concentrators already i told you so due to the uh, the stress concentration the fatigue uh, phenomena will be generate and then uh, due to the fatigue failure uh, the component will damage the stress concentration the concentrators uh, stress concentration concentrators means so whenever there is no uh, um, smooth uh, lines are not possible inside the component there uh, uh, whenever the imperfections is possible 
so some discontinuity is there in the component there there must be high concentration the the component must be undergo the high stress concentration due to this stress concentration fatigue when a failure will be occur so the stress concentration means example so i will tell you uh, take a uniform bar air mission component so the stress concept the flow lines are carrying like this these are uh, flow lines the uniform bar this is take uniform bar and uh, air subjected uh, uh, air tensile force so what will happen here in this the stress concentration the stress concentration means here the smooth the flow lines the stress distribution lines it carries from one end to another and these lines are called stress distribution lines so there is no stress concentration why because they are maintaining uniform distribution uh, uniform distribution stress, uh, stress uh, lines are there so whenever the component having sudden changes of its uh, shape sudden changes of its geometrical features so sudden uh, uh the sudden imperfections is there in the component like the uh, hole suppose having some wall so circle so what will happen here so suppose if this subject subject uh, this component subject to two tensile load here also so up to here the so wherever uh, imperfections is not there there is the, uh, the stress distribution lines are uniform here the stress distributions are not in uniform like this so the stress distribution lines are here so what will happen here some uh, here some uh, disturbance uh, will be happen here so due to this disturbance so after uh, after uh, subject to load this component will fail due to the local stresses so this phenomenon is called as this the component subjected to stress concentration another example suppose having some notch so here the stress distribution lines are like this so the stress concentration will be high at this uh, zone so due to this the fatigue failure will be occurred Clear yeah, that is the stress concentrators. So adhesion property. So already know paint or coatings etc. So whatever you applied uh, coating on the surface. Suppose you are applied coating here. Adhesion property. So based on this, uh, you can uh, uh, improve. You, so you can uh, uh, this uh, leads to the uh, wear. So, do to minimize to minimize the wear or corrosion, we have to apply some more addition uh, materials. The thermal conductivity at the interface. So, you must concentrate on the uh, thermal conductivity of the material. You should know the property of the material. So that's why. So, whenever you are designing a component, so whenever you are using the components for its uh, to, for for the application. So whenever uh, there is possible in a relative motion, so there you must know all these properties: thermal properties, mechanical properties, and chemical properties. So clear. So all these properties uh, will play main role in uh, in the engineering tribology. Next, similarly, electrical conductivity and the interface. So electrical conductivity based on the electrical conductivity, the surface uh, um, uh, the surface topography. Uh, depends and then uh, biocompatibility clear so here uh, so biocompatibility electrical conductivity and interface and stress concentration all these influence on the performance of the component clear see here uh, shown some uh, yeah related to this uh, surface topography so here uh, lubricant applied here and then uh, uh, contaminants are there and oxide and uh, uh, surface properties disturbed material and the bulk material properties so here yeah, the surface uh, finish so the surface topography so like this uh, illustrated the detailed diagram was shown in this see the lubricant and absorbed uh, uh, contaminants and oxides and surface properties and then the bulk properties, the base material, the bulk properties. 
So clear? So transfer to the surface. If the surface topography also uh, involves um, two um, terms, that is uh, roughness and uh, waviness. So the form the ideal geometrical shape here uh, the roughness surface and a waviness uh, uh, shown in this uh, the diagram. These uh, terms related to this is surface of the topography. So the, you can uh, examine, uh, you can take uh, uh, this uh, contour by using some uh, experimental methods uh, and by using some uh, high powerful microscope. So major terms are you see here you take uh, one surface and then uh, shown in this uh, diagram the waveness width and then the flaw. So the flaw is there here. Yeah. So that is imperfection. Clear. Yeah. So and uh, waveness uh, height and the roughness height. What is the, the roughness of the height? So how do you calculate this roughness and waveness height by using some uh, measurement uh, measuring instruments are there? So by using uh, different measuring instruments, you can calculate the roughness and uh, waveness uh, of the uh, particular surface, the width and uh, the wheel direction. These all are the important terms, the major terms related to the topography of uh, surfaces. So here, surface imperfections at an atomic level are matched by macroscopic deviations from flatness. So here already shown here flaw. The flaw is a one type of uh, imperfection. Okay? So here uh, that uh, the surface imperfection uh, at an atomic level. So almost every known surface apart from the uh, cleared space of uh, my car rough already you know. The roughness means that most parts of surface are not flat. So what do you mean by roughness? The roughness is means that not uh, the flat surface from either a peak or a well, valley. Suppose this is, this is a flat surface. You can say flat surface. So but the surface is like this. So this is a rough surface. So uh, a peak or a valley like this, like, like contours. The typical amplitude between these the peaks and the valleys for engineering surface is about one micrometer. So what is the amplitude? Suppose here peaks are there in surface. So what is the amplitude from, uh, from its uh, reference line? So that is uh, uh, for engineering surface about one micrometer. That is amplitude between peaks. So amplitude between peaks that is one micrometer. So, the profile of a rough surface is almost always random unless uh, some regular features have been uh, deliberately introduced. Suppose, unless uh, you are, if not, if you, suppose you have introduced some uh, regular uh, features, so then uh, there is no rough surface. It's almost always random only the surface. The random components of the surface profiles look very much the same, whatever their source. So here uh, there is some similarity between these uh, uh, source. The same whatever you are uh, so having the surface role, the random components of the surface properties also show like this only. So irrespective of the absolute scale of size and volume. So the why the the the, the size of the two peaks is one micron. Clear. Yeah. So here uh, I will show you the diagram. So very here see. So one mm of a roller bearing race. This is a uh, that uh, the mechanical component, machine element of the roller bearing. So we have a series of surface roughness profiles extracted from machine surfaces. So the, all these diagrams extracted from the some machine uh, machine surfaces like uh, uh, bearings. Clear. And uh, yeah, see the surface of the earth and the moon are uh, shown in this figure. The 30 mm of the ball bearing raceway and then uh, 110 mm of the lead bed. So lead bed here surface roughness and then 18 km of earth topography and 3033 km of moon topography. So all these uh, uh, profiles extracted from the uh, some sources uh, uh, surface of the earth and moon and uh, the mission surfaces uh, like uh, the bearings. So under examination, uh, under examination of the microscope. 
clear so the similarity between random profiles of rough surfaces with the natural or artificial so you take the random surface so there is some similarity between uh, these uh, two um uh, surfaces uh, natural level surface and then uh, the rough surfaces so another unique property of surface roughness is that uh, repeatedly magnified so that is increasing details of surface features are observed down to the nano scales till it has been observed to the nano scales see in this diagram show uh, the similarity of the surface profiles illustrated here so in this uh, magnified like this so the surface uh, in is rough surface is like this due to the 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 electrical uh, uh, electrical signals resembles uh, caused due uh, produced this type of uh, profiles clear so there is always the appearance of the surface profiles is the same regardless of the magnification so here magnified the magnified this uh, uh, this uh, the contour the roughness clear so that's why here some uh, so electrical uh, signals resembles the white uh, a white fix clear so so uh, similarity is uh, some self similarity of the surface profiles uh, shown in this uh, uh, it has been observed this one is a number of techniques and parameters have been developed to characterize surface topography already we have discussed in uh, uh, previous slides some uh, heat treatment procedures uh, some coating methods clear so we already have discussed about the techniques so other techniques or parameters have been developed to characterize the surface to characterize to enhance the surface to enhance the surface uh, uh, topography the most widely used surface descriptors are statistical surface parameters so in previous slide already we calculated uh, here uh, this uh, the, the this data is statistical data so clear observed or uh, extracted from the some electrical signals so the new development in this area involves surface characterization by so real surfaces are difficult to define so real surface is very difficult if you, you can't define so in order to describe the surface at, at least two parameters are needed so what are the parameters one is height parameters clear and then spatial parameters so here uh, so whenever you are defining this um, the surfaces two parameters are important one is describe the variation in height the height characteristics that you can you have to calculate by using uh, different um, methods and similarly so how height varies in the plane of the surface that is the spatial parameter so how it uh, height varies in the uh, in a certain uh, plane this one also important uh, uh, parameter the spatial parameters and the height parameters so these two parameters by using these two parameters you can define the surface okay. so how uh, he is roughness generated so what is the uh, what is the uh, cause of uh, roughness so why uh, the some components are having roughness some components are um, smoothness so already we in previous slides uh, we have discussed the roughness uh, the element of topography so various machining operations are there in mechanical engineering so lathe machining and uh, um, milling machining uh, drilling grinding So, clear. So, uh, shaping. So, different the uh, no machining processes are there. So, while well, uh, no manufacturing the product, so uh, how you have to perform all these um, operations. Clear. So, in the process of removing material, so it is uh, using uh, so in this using uh, some turning process. If you want to remove the some material on the surface of a component, so you have to use uh, some machining process. and uh, how to cut the component so there is so the step turning is there you have to make hole in the component the drilling operation is there so the smoothing you have to uh, remove some uh, some outer finishing so grinding machine like this so here it, so it uh, removing of the material it uh, leads to a, a smooth surface 
आ रहे हैं स्मूथ सरफेस आ रहे हैं रफ सरफेस सो बाई 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 रिमूविंग रिमूविंग ऑपरेटिंग दिस ऑपरेशन सो सम रफनेस विल बी जनरेट सो आफ्टर रफनेस सो अगेन रिमूव कंटिन्यूस दिस ऑपरेशन कीप ऑन कंट कीप ऑन रिमूव द मटेरियल देन स्मूथनेस इज पॉसिबल स्मूथ सरफेस इज पॉसिबल सो एग्जांपल यू आर साइंग when you are doing the sawing operation so what will happen some material will be removed so that you do uh, remove the material so some uh, uh, scratches uh, um, remains on the, um, the component so the due to this leads to the roughness of the surface so so similarly turning so let me show uh, you are giving uh, forward uh, uh, feeding uh, and uh, you are moving the tool uh, in uh, in forward direction some remarks will be generated on the surface this one also some leads to the roughness and then the milling operation your uh, shaping operation and the grinding operation the surface grinding and cylindrical grinding so all these operations are called the mechanical machining operations so various machining operations the roughness uh, is, uh, roughness is possible so to uh, roughness is possible so that's why uh, you have to remove the roughness uh, some methods uh, you have to use clear so already you have explained you know, we have discussed in the in the previous slides so why is the state of the surface important in tribology so up to now we have discussed about uh, uh, the drop of the topography of the surfaces clear smooth surfaces and um, rough surfaces so why why uh, why should we should why we should learn this uh, uh, the surface uh, importance in tribology so when it is when we are applying light load then the important the mechanical properties and surface uh, contaminated minutes and the construction of the surface so contaminants uh, are there so here any uh, uh, hazardous material other uh, foreign material is there so then uh, definitely uh, uh, the wear uh, the begins clearly and then uh, where you, you are uh, subjected to um, the light the heavy load the, so the less important the surface is very is less important and the elastic and plastic deformation dominated so in this the elastic and plastic formation in the property will dominate uh, the uh, this uh, the surface uh, finish so that is that uh, depends upon the the application and the type of load so the surface uh, finish will, will be vary so that's why uh, so you sh you should uh, concentrate uh, the these uh, loads um, the while calculating the surface topography the small contacts where, wherever the small contacts are there so like a cam and follow there is very important the surface um, finish so large contact is large contact is there there is no, no need the less important so there is always possible of smooth surface there is no question of rough surfaces so that is based on the contacts and uh, that is depends upon the uh, loads so according to the load the surface uh, finish uh, will be vary okay students these are the references i have taken yeah thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates.